we're going to be looking at a summing amplifier. So previously we've gone over inverting amplifiers, we've gone known inverting amplifier, unity gain, and a little bit of instruction, and these can all be found in the playlist linked below the like button. But now with our summing amplifier, we have a variation of a inverting amplifier. This allows multiple input voltages to be summed together, as we see here, R1 and R2, uh, the V1 and V2 are going to be summed together with different gains. So our V1 and V2 have different gains. It is in the summing amplifier shown in figure four. We have the following transfer function. And so the more input voltages can be summed together by adding input resistors in parallel with our R1 and R2 and applying each input voltage to its own resistor. So if we have um, like R3, like if we have it in parallel with this resistor, um, we would have uh, V3 through our R3. The key concept is that the virtual ground at the negative op amp terminal allows the gains for each input to be set independently. So one can be changed without affecting the others. Basically what this is saying is because with our ground here, the uh, op amp is gonna want to equalize and we can set the gain for whatever voltage we add in here, parallel, um, to its own thing. So each voltage can have its own specific gain. Now, we need to design the circuit in figure four to achieve voltage gains of two for V1 and three for our V2. Before constructing our circuit, we're gonna use our spice simulations. That has already been done for our lab report. So my partner, lab partner has already wrote out a lot of the report. They've done the calculations, they've done the spice simulations. And so now it's just up to us to build our breadboard. And so in the breadboard, we are going to use the following resistors. Our RF is 20 kilo ohms, R1 is 10, and our R2 is about 6.69. And this is because we get these voltage gains. And the voltage gain is just if we take the resistor and then divide it by the resistor, and we would get two, obviously, because we have 20 divided by 10, that gives two for V1. And then 20 divided by about six, 6.9, uh, would give us about three. And so that is how we would achieve these values. Now we could test them, but we don't need to because we already know that the gain is correct. We would plug it into this formula to get the voltage output and that has already been done for us and we would use that answer to then calculate the percent error. I guess I did not include it here but that is okay because we are going to be going over that because percent error is just the measured value I believe minus the actual value divided by the actual value times 100% or that's backwards depending on the terminology I sometimes get it mixed up but now we can look at the breadboard once we know about all of this. Now we're going to look at our breadboard. And so this is very similar to what we have last time. In fact, it's the exact same thing. I did not change it. Uh, as always, we're going to remove the, the wires, the inputs, the uh, monitoring wires as well. Make sure that your wave gen is disabled so that there's no current running through it and you don't short circuit anything. With these removed, I can easier, easierly see the circuit. We have this wire making the node from the negative input out here. Um, we have our R2, because this is the resistor that's about 6.69, so that gives us the gain of three. And then we have these two resistors that are in series that make the 20 kilo ohm resistor. This is gonna be our RF. So our RF here, and we have, we know the um, current flowing through here. And then once we put our voltage input here, and now we need our R1. So our R1 is going to be the 10 kilo ohm resistor. I'm just gonna grab one of these from the little sheet. And so it's going to look like this. And all we need from here is to take it and we can put it in a different row um, like this. We need it to be in a different row. Otherwise the resistors are basically going to be in parallel with each other. And we do not want that. Um, we don't want them, we don't want voltage splitting between both of them because if we put in voltage here, we're going to put it into this column. That way it goes into the 6.69 kilo ohm resistor. And again, that is our V2, that's our R2. It's gonna, the V2 is this white wire, this yellow wire, it's gonna flow through here and it's gonna go into here. Now we have another yellow wire with a white stripe and this is going to be our second voltage input. It's going to go into this column to go through this resistor to go into here. So these are both gonna flow through their separate resistors like this, um, and then they are going to eventually make their way into here. So we have current flowing through here, into here, then here, into here, 
and then through the V out, it's going to have current flowing back into here for the negative feedback. Now we want to monitor this, so as always, we put our blue wire with the output, and then we're going to take the orange monitoring wire, and we can either put it with this yellow wire or this yellow wire. Um, it doesn't matter because they're both going to be kind of outputting the same thing. So we can just plug it in just like that with that column. And so this is what our breadboard is going to look like. It's very nice, very organized, and we can clearly see where everything is terminating, and where everything is going into. So with this done, we can go back into our WaveGen software. I'm going to click Run All for the WaveGen, Run for our Scope, and then we're going to turn the Master Enable on. Then we're going to look, get something that looks just like this. Our Voltage 1 and Voltage 2 for the waveform, uh, we put the amplitude as 500 millivolts, so that means it's going to be just one volt peak to peak. That means we're going to have our RF divided by our 1, that's going to give us about 2, and then we have our RF divided by our R2, and that's going to give us the about 3, so we should have a voltage gain of about 5. And here we have about a, or we have our 4.8, and this is going to be divided by our voltage input, which is this 1. And so that means we have approximately 5. And we would just calculate our percent here. Uh, I did not include that in the lab report, um, but that is, it's not okay, but it's okay for this. Uh, but we do know how to make this on the breadboard. We showed that, and this is the waveform software. And that's it for the summing amplifier and how to make it. Next, we're going to be looking at low-pass filters.